<laughs> Welcome to Life, Laughter, Divorce, episode 33. I'm your host, Leanne Linsky. And I'm the boyfriend. <laughs> and we want to thank you for tuning in each and every week and listening to us. And thank you for the nice reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. So if you're out there and you want to leave a review, we'd highly appreciate it. Wouldn't we, boyfriend? Yes, we would. <laughs> yes. You know what? He's over here just smiling at me because we are in the wonderful land of divorce. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Actually, why is the, the I, I always hear that and it seems so... Who do you what, always hear that from? Well, you say it and other people do, but because oh. you see wonderful and then you hear divorce, wonderful's got like this positive connotation and divorce has this negative connotation, but... As we have learned from our previous guests that there are divorce ceremonies and people celebrate divorce. So I'm starting to change my tune on this. Yeah, let's change that tune. So it could be it could be a positive thing. You know, we talk about uh, life after divorce and getting better because we're becoming better people, I would hope, as a result of it. So that's one way it could be better, right? As Well, as long as we are, as gen- the general we, uh learn from our mistakes or learn from our choices and try to make better choices uh, because of those. Well, you know, I think that's just it. I I know going through my second one, I didn't want to become a bitter woman with 10 million cats. I think, as you recall from my, my shares last time uh, on uh, previous episodes. But one of the things is, is, you know, I don't think that when we get out of divorce, we don't ever want to have another relationship. We hope to have better relationships and we always hope maybe we're going to make better choices. So how do we go about doing that? And is that possible? I think it's possible. But um, so let me ask, uh, well, I'll share from my side. All right, Uh, please do. Some of of the previous relationships that I've been in, some of them have been for fun. Some of them you've tried to make them a little longer and you think this person may be the person for you. But uh, sometimes there's not a good, uh, a well enough established foundation uh, of a partnership with that mm. person, which could cause problems. And I've tried to learn from that moving forward. How about you? Actually, I'd have to say, yeah, uh, pretty much all of that applies to me as well. I think there's been relationships where I would have hoped that it could have been better and it just didn't have the solid foundation that it needed. Yeah. So that that foundation partnership slash friendship, friendship is yeah. really is crucial for success. I think. I think so too. I think it needs to be. Uh... Trust me, I need to be your friend in order to keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that, listeners? <laughs> we we have been had such busy schedules lately, so we have to be good friends to get through stuff like this. You know, and and it's. Interesting because relationships is once we're in a committed relationship, it becomes more than just a dating relationship or a boyfriend girlfriend relationship. It comes a life relationship, and life brings about conflict. It brings about challenges. It brings about unexpected surprises. Uh, brings about all kinds of different things that you have to learn to maneuver through and deal with and and the passion side of relationship is great but it doesn't help you get through those challenges right necessarily so the friendship side of that relationship or your relationship if it's strong those challenges will hopefully bring you closer together uh or at least work together to get through those challenges as a unit that's so true and really when i think about relationships and partnerships there's even the the closer you get and cohabitating and things and finances come in the way, there are business aspects to a relationship and there are bigger and different kinds of trust, trust issues that come into play. And I think there does have to be a, a friendship of sorts there, a, a strong one in order for people to have a certain, have a open lines of communication. It can't be, it can't just be all physical, although, I mean, that is nice, but to be long term and to overcome all those things life throws at you, I think there has to be something even more solid. Yeah, and it does. And I think it has to not just be a friendship where I'll be there for you kind of thing. It's gotta be like I I understand you. I I get you. I can sense when you are happy. I can sense when you're sad. I can sense when you're angry. And I have 
uh, we've worked together, we've been together long enough that I know how to react or to not react uh, when we're in those situations. And the same goes the other way. Mm -hmm. So that is that is a deeper friendship, but it's also, it, but, it, but it still is a friendship. Right. You know, as as you're saying that, I'm I'm also thinking of all of the times you you know when we meet somebody and we start dating because all of that is true and and I think back to other uh, times where I've dated somebody or they you've gone out with someone for a period of time and you want those things with somebody but those things aren't something that come quickly and they don't just happen all the time like they're they're learned over a period of time and it takes work so typically and, right. it takes work yeah and work not like oh my god this is so painfully hard <laughs> kind of work but it takes i think a conscious effort yeah and a willingness to like put in the time and to pay the pay attention to the other person and to pick up on those things and the willing the wanting to do that and i think um I think sometimes in the past, I was looking back, it's like, I just wanted those things to just be there automatically. And they, they just don't happen that way. Most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. So this week, <laughs> we, we, we were, we have something special for you guys this week. Yeah. Th this week, we interviewed our first couple, not just a just, single. No, or, no, no a, a, couple. a couple. Both of them who have been married and divorced before. One of which has been married and divorced twice before, and one who's been married once before. So, um, just to give you a little bit of background, we're going to be uh, talking. We met with, we talked with Tori and Andrea. And Tori is actually a culinary student here in Long Beach. She studied the science of making gelato in Italy and owned two gelato shops outside of Chicago for three years before moving here. Now, Andrea is a mechanical engineer working for a small manufacturing firm in Los Angeles, managing their engineering department. Andrea was born in northern Italy and has been in the U.S. for 18 years, whereas Tori is an Italian-American and both are now dual citizens. Andrea has been married twice before this marriage and Tori once before, and they met online in 2007 and were married in 2008. Yeah, that's pretty fast. That's pretty quick. So uh, talking to them was absolutely fascinating to watch. And you know what? We're going to let them tell their story. So I'd like you to meet Tori and Andrea Chiapelli without further ado. Welcome to Life Laughter Divorce Podcast. Thank We're you. happy to have you, you here. So Tori and Andrea and the boyfriend is here. Yes, I'm actually here this time for the interview. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm putting this down in my diary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you two, uh, you guys have been married since 2008, right? 2008. 2008. Yeah, yep. right. yeah, we met in 2007 yep. and we got married in 2008. All right. So now we know that now you, Tori, have been married once before. Correct. And divorced. And then, Andrea, you've been married and divorced twice. Twice, yes. So twice before. Before, before this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, I guess, about how the two of you met. Hmm. We met online. Mm. We 2007 met. online. That's a uh, yeah. Is that yeah. like that AOL? Was, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's no. right when it was being. Um, yeah, no, not quite. But that's right when uh, uh, online dating started to be more accepted. Because initially, I don't think it was really accepted. It was I like think so. Odd, but it was starting to be accepted. More in fact, time. when we sat down for the first time with Andrea's family, it was uh, for Christmas Eve, and someone asked us how we met. And before I could turn to Andrea and say, "Don't tell them." <laughs> because this is in Italy with his Italian family. He said online, and you could hear crickets from miles away. It was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> really? so at the time, it was not very acceptable in Italy. It was fine in the U.S., but yeah. in Italy, we, yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun to watch. The yeah, reaction. their reaction was like, holy cow. <laughs> Who is this girl? <laughs> now they're like, oh, she's sketchy. She's exactly. very sketchy. Why background is she, check. This woman who went online. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it really? Was fun. It was fun. What, what uh, dating app was it? 
It was Yahoo yeah. Personals, Personal. yep, yeah. which is, I think they were bought out by Match.com. No. no, I don't know. They're not around anymore. They're not around anymore. Right. Yeah. Wow. So did it have that thing like you got mail? Remember that movie? Yeah. <laughs> is that, it was after that. Um, no. It was after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got, we were matched. Um, and then I think you sent me an email. No, you did. I sent him an email. <laughs> <apparently>. <laughs> that was pretty firm. Um, and then we didn't email each other. We texted each other right away. Mm. Right. And then we met the next day and we've literally been together since. Wow. Yeah. 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 We met October 12th, 2007, and we were engaged by Christmas. Really? Yep. That's that was fast. Yeah. yeah. No, Andrea, did you propose? Yeah. Okay. I made massive suggestions, though. I mean, he was, it was totally safe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You were giving him like the big green light, yeah, right? It was totally safe for him. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was quick. How did, what was it about this relationship that you knew? You know, we met, um, we met at a restaurant. Was it, what restaurant was it? It was uh, Bottom Rock. The rock bottom. The rock bottom. Well, that's an appropriate date for <laughs> an appropriate place for a first date. It was kind of a in between the both of us. He was in the because I lived in Chicago and uh, out, Bloomingdale. He lived, he, yeah, uh, and I lived, lived in the western middle. suburbs. So yeah. we met right in the middle. Um, and there was traffic, and I didn't realize. Um, and so he was running late. I was about to leave when you got there. So we. He did get there in time, and we mm -hmm. sat down while he was late. Was this before cell phones? <laughs> no, they were, they were texting. Oh, okay. they were they were texting. Te you were texting? <laughs> <laughs> this was, was actually <laughs> before smartphones, I think. There was no smartphone. No. At that time. no. Yeah, uh -huh. it was 10 years ago. So, yeah, it was like right before Yeah, the smartphone. iPhone came out 10 years yeah. ago, so that's about, about yeah, right around yeah. that time. Yeah. So a little motto think... time. There was a, a little motto. You know. Yeah, a little yeah. motto. Yeah, the little <laughs> motto. Yeah. <laughs> The razor. Yeah. So he got there late and I was a little irritated, but we sat down and right away it was like we knew each other. It was crazy. Mm. Super comfortable. It it was a perfect fit. So we met the next day. We went home mm -hmm. and then we went met the next day. And then we've been together since. Yep. Wow. Yeah. We sure. rarely spent the night apart. I mean, you went to Italy once without me because I was in school. But other well, than that, we've yeah. been together. So how was it different than your previous relationships, yeah. your previous marriages? Because it sounded like this clicked and we're good. How yeah, I just as I knew that Andrea was, the, was right, I knew right away that my first husband was wrong. That's how fast I knew my first husband was wrong. In fact, the the... Right after I got married, I remember thinking to myself, what did I just do? Uh, really? This was a huge mistake. Yeah. And mm. it was five years of torture. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was five years of torture. I, I remember promising myself that I, I made a promise to myself. I made a promise. My marriage vows were a promise, and I'm going to try and make this work. But I remember thinking just regret for the majority of my marriage. So and at the end of that time period, it was a huge relief for me. It was a huge like, okay, I will take responsibility for my part in this mistake, but that that was a mistake for sure. And then I wasn't even divorced when I met Andrea. I, I was maybe you were, you were, a month away from yeah, being divorced, yeah. but we got engaged should we tell him that story? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you yes, should. Yes. That sounds juicy. <laughs> I was divorced at the courthouse in Kane County, Illinois, um, and was married in front of the same judge in the same room a week later. No, not a week. A what? Was no. it two days? It was like really, really soon right no, after that. No, not that. It was a few months later. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh-oh. We got <laughs> There's married. There's some discrepancies here. <laughs> we got married right away, but it was the same judge in really? the same room. Yeah, and I remember going, oh, I hope he doesn't remember me. <laughs> did he? No, he didn't. He didn't <laughs> let on that he did. did wow. But we got married here at the courthouse because we had a wedding in Italy. So, oh. and to have all of that transferred back over to English in the United States was just such a huge pain in the neck 
that we got married in both places. It was easier. Much easier. So if you get married in another country, what what do you, you have to go through a whole different process? Yeah, you, you have to transfer everything. Yeah, you have to, to be legally married in both places, you have to go through the consulates and fill out all the paperwork and it's a massive, pay all the f- fees and all that stuff. It's just, so it's it just, just easier to get married again. Both places. Right, and both then just places. do it. We did it there. We did it here. So you have to go. Yeah. Just two dates, two different dates. Hey. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like moving to another country is easier than getting a divorce. Like if I leave this country, it's just done. It doesn't apply anywhere else. Um, no. No. It does. It does. Yeah. It does apply. Oh. You're still married. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got it. You can't get remarried. You could remain oh. married, but if you wanted to remarry in okay. another country, you would have to go you through. You have to show the, the divorce. Divorce yeah. paper. Interesting. And oh. it depends on your religion. We're Catholic. Right. Um, so yeah, it's we actually matter. went through the church in Illinois. We went to our parish. We went through all the counseling we did all that stuff. We had to get dispensation, a dispensation to get married outside of our parish. Um, we had to get all of our marriages annulled by the Catholic Church. So we did all, we jumped through all those hoops of fire. Wow. But mm-hmm. you did it all while you were still married, technically. Te- no, no, it no? Was a Yeah, it was divorced, apparently. Yep, was. <laughs> I remember that better than I do. Um, but it was almost immediate. So divorce, yeah. finish all the paperwork, be yeah. done, and then. And emotionally, I was divorced. Right away, as soon as yeah. as the two of us had decided that this is not working, finally, five years later, I was over it. I I had been over it. So yeah. for me, I had made a decision long before it had actually happened to not be with that person. Hmm. So when I did, when I was able to be with the right person, I knew right away that, that he was the right person. That's something. Now, yeah. have either of you had children from your previous marriage? No. No, I went through five years of fertility treatments with my first husband. And that, I don't know if you know of anyone who's been through that. It is uh, just an emotional, heart-wrenching, awful, stressful, financially stressful thing to go through. So um, I don't want to say that that's what hurt my mar- my first marriage because really I-, I married the wrong person. And I can... You know, I, I yeah. would have said that the day after I got married, <laughs> but it was not something that I wish would wish on anyone. Infertility is just a brutal experience, and uh, and I did experience it, and it was a long experience, but it ruined me physically forever. Really? Yeah. So we never had kids, partially because I can't anymore, but we got married when I was 39, so by that time, it was kind of like— You're over it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, and and now you now you were married two times two before, times, yes. and so how long how long had you been divorced? And what, uh, from my second marriage, yeah. it was a couple of years. Mm-hmm. I was divorced. And so, how long had you been married in your previous marriages? Were they well, long? Well, the first time it was a long eight, time, eight right? years, yeah. and then That's a second the one forty almost four years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and did you have a similar experience minus yeah, the yeah. infertility? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is like Tori said, is uh, when you've been married before, you kind of know what you're looking for. It's pretty easy to recognize what you don't want to see in a, in a, in a person. And with her, I couldn't find anything wrong with it, so that was... <laughs> 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 he looked and looked and looked. <laughs> I guess I passed. So it was, pretty, it was pretty easy to make a decision. Because, like I said, you know what you don't want to see. You, yeah. you know what you don't want, what first were, of all. Do you, do you know, like, were there, like, three things off the top of your head that you knew you didn't want in a person? Yeah. First thing I didn't want in a person is being an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, yes. yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one, yep. And I don't know, and then. No be, drama, you said no, you don't uh, like drama. The first thing about it, no drama. I'll call it moderation, mm-hmm. not being like a, a bar humper or something. And uh, <laughs> I've never heard that one. <laughs> did you say bar humper? Yeah. You did say that. I yeah, was I go like, from no, bar, right. Go from a bar to another one. It's going to oh, catch hopper. on. I yeah. see that as my new, <laughs> <laughs> my new oh, yeah. go-to. And, and the other one, I, what I can say, be responsible. Be a person responsible. You need to be, be somebody that's responsible with money, with everything. 
That's, yeah. Well, that was my those are good things. Yeah. Good qualities to have. Yeah. yeah. But things you've learned from the previous relationships Correct. that now you know this is what I'm looking for. Right. Yeah. And you you found it. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. That's that's amazing. And Tori, did you have similar things? Similar, no. Um, I mean, obviously, those are great qualities, yeah. but to me, that's like, duh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my first husband was eight years younger than I was, mm-hmm. and I got married to be married. That was my responsibility in the whole thing. I wanted to be married. I wanted to have kids. So I just got married. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I wanted a partner this time. I didn't want, he needed a mommy and I played that role for five long torturous years. So I needed someone who's going to be independent, but a good, a good partner. And uh, I wanted someone who was traveled and possibly knew another language and uh, was open to experiencing other cultures. And I mean, I, I wrote down my ideal scene. I wrote down what I was looking for and I ordered him. I literally ordered him. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. When you're this, uh, it, wow. Yeah. So, so but, uh, go back to your, to, to ask a question about your previous marriage. He was eight years younger than you were mm-hmm. and I'm doing the math. So you were yeah. 33, 34. Was he was in this 20s. 32. I believe when I yes he was in his 20s mm. and, and, and uh, younger than 25 I've always 25 to me has been the cutoff range from being a kid to an adult yeah once you cross that you're a little more of an adult you're still growing and, and but, I, no offense but men some <laughs> yeah, men throw it, throw it at me. Do it. some <laughs> men don't actually cross that threshold yeah. um, I, and I'm not trying to be mean I'm just in general there are, uh, there are some men that just never get there. Um, so I think my my ideal scene was a tall order. I needed someone who could sustain himself on his own. You know, I needed someone who was going to be able to feed himself and clean himself. And, you know, I, I literally did all those things for someone for a long time. And it, it got old fast. Yeah, you yeah, needed so. an equal. I needed an equal. I needed a partner. And yeah. I can't imagine being in another relationship like that. It was torturous. It was our, It was very, it was a lot of work. And you hear people say marriage is work. It doesn't have to be work all the time. If you're married to someone who's an equal partner and um, is of the same cloth, you know, you think alike or you think similarly and you have the similar goals and, uh, you know, mannerisms and culture and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be work and hard. It's not with us. We get along very well. We There's not a lot of stress or drama. It's very easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, too, knowing, so nowadays a lot of people in their previous marriages come with children. And you two are very fortunate that you don't have children. So Mm -hmm. there's not a necessary contact, you know, to keep and remain in contact with your exes. Do either of you have contact with your exes on a regular basis? Negative (laughs) ghostwriter. No. No. (laughs) Negative ghostwriter. The pattern is full. We, um, Andre and I are foster parents, actually. We tried to adopt through the foster program in Illinois. Yeah, it was another really hard um. You, you train to be a foster parent, and a lot of the training's like, okay, <laughs> you know, don't don't abuse a child. It's just ridiculous, the training. But we had um, jobs, both of us. I had an insurance agency. Andrea had a full-time job, and we kept telling the, the adoption agency that we could handle one kid, and they kept saying okay and dropping off two kids. And, you know, just things like that that really test a relationship happen. We've been through it all. It's yeah. just insane the amount of stuff we've been through wow. in the 10 years we've been married. Yeah. We had how many placements? Two, two placements. Um, the first were, were two young little girls. One was six, six weeks, six weeks six. or months. Three months. Three months and two years. And the 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 baby was in a body cast. Uh, and they called me to go get this little baby. And at the time, I was on the golf course in Wisconsin <laughs> for a golf outing um, for work. And so I packed up and left. I mean, it was like, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm out. So I picked up the baby. And when I got home... They had dropped off her sister that we knew nothing about <laughs> yeah. with Andrea. Wow. 
Yeah, um, I was I was at home and I saw this uh, knock at the door and they dropped these kids. I'm like, okay, real okay. <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> yeah. And so, they were like, oh, the sister is coming. Then the, she was asleep. The kid was the baby was asleep and they put it on the bed and they left. It was that's insane. It? That's it. Yeah, it was insane. So can you imagine when the, the girl, the, this baby woke up and she saw me in the room? She was. Like, oh, my gosh. Freaking out. Are you? I know. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So I, I got home with the, her sister, the baby, in a body cast with all these instructions on how to take care of this infant in a body cast. And we bonded with these kids. I mean, it was nine months. I, mm. you know, we had to piece them back together. This little baby was in the cast, and we got her through all the— therapy and she wouldn't you know in the end she was out of a body cast and sitting up and eating food you know hard hard food solid foods um and the two-year-old wasn't speaking a word yet so we thought she had hearing problems so i was taking her taking off work to take her to the hearing specialist and figure out what's going on and it turns out that she she wasn't sleeping at night and this little girl was miserable and turns out she had a UTI and none of the doctors were listening to me and she started spiking a fever. So we took her to the ER and the doctor <laughs> didn't believe me, but tested her anyway and found out she had a, it was this like <gasps> crazy, <laughs> totally crazy. So we patched him up and then they went, they sent him back to their parents, back to where, yeah, mm. it was. Wow. And oh. that was what, two days before his father passed oh, away yeah. in Italy. It was just a really Heart insane, heart wrenching. Yeah. That was yeah. awful. And then we came back from Italy to all this kid stuff. I mean, we left right away. So we came back and all their stuff, you know, their clothes and all this stuff was still there. And it was just like oh, brutal. That, how? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, I have so many questions about this. Like, so you, when you when you initially decided that you wanted to be foster parents, was it in hopes that you would be adopting? Right. Yeah, yeah, we um, we were going through. We applied for a program with Catholic Charities to. It was their Foster Adopt program, and we wanted to rescue a child, basically. Yeah. And they had a very successful um, program called Foster Adopt. And while we were going through the certification process to be foster parents, the state of Illinois had passed a law allowing um, or mandating that uh, foster, the foster program, or that gay couples could adopt children. It was, it became law while we were in school. And Catholic Charities didn't want to do that. So they dropped their program, all program, and all, all the, the adoption processes that were going, all these kids that were in process of being adopted had to scramble to, to find another agency to, to finish facilitating that process. And we were transferred to charities who didn't have a foster adopt program. They just had an adoption program so, or a foster program. So when we never actually met with any, any of the people that we mm. dealt with at, at social services. So we told them right off the bat, here, our lives are very busy. We have set aside some time and we would love to adopt it. These are our goals. Here's what we would like to see happen, um, and we can only handle one kid. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Well, these f adoption or these foster agencies get paid on the placements that they facilitate. So it felt like rubber stamping, you know, can you take this two-year-old? Can you take this? Da, da, da. They would call it all different times of mm -hmm. day and night asking if we could take these kids. And it was always like, can you take this brother and sister? Can you take it? And we don't, we didn't feel right separating Family siblings. Yeah. So it was like, listen, stop calling unless you have one child. We can't handle more than one. Okay. And they would drop off too. <laughs> it was just insane. So, and these kids would come with the clothes on their back, period. It was crazy. Wow. So we, luckily we had, I, I had a huge network of friends with kids that had grown out a lot of, of stuff so they would drop off big glad bags of stuff, you know, clothes and stuff. And it turned out these kids, especially the girls, would be in these like matching hat outfits, these like <laughs> fussy, fuzzy, fast, fancy. Um, but you know, it was it was like owning the business when we talked about that earlier. Yeah. It was like 
um, improvising on the fly completely. But from your own perspective, that's an emotional toll because yeah, like you said you completely. get you get connected to these kids and oh then, my gosh. then they're gone and then you like you said you put all this work in and you connect Into with them a, and you help them but not and, only that you're, you they come to you broken uh, and without a stitch of clothing or possessions of their own it is the saddest state it is awful so you do your best to help these kids get back to zero you know, you get these kids who need medical help and they need attention and affection and they need they need you. Mm -hmm. So you put all of this into fixing them and then they send them back to the people that had done this in the first place. So knowing that because these are emotional attachments that you had with these children and and how soon after your marriage did you start taking in? What's a year or two? No, two years, two, three years. So that's fairly, that you're still in a new relationship, essentially. I mean, you're just now getting really comfortable and very settled. And then, yeah, you, you know, you have, you have to take coasters. into consideration that Andrea and I were comfortable from day one. Okay. We so, yeah. hit the ground running completely. Uh, I, both of us had been married before and knew the, the deal. You know, we knew how to, to be with each other immediately. It was, Really, really comfortable right away. So we didn't need a honeymoon phase. Yeah, we we were friends right away, and we we communicated well right away. We just set into life really easily. So um, two two years was long enough for us to talk about and decide that we were going to try doing something like this. And so, so when you went through this experience. You know, knowing that you're, you felt that your relationship, and obviously it is very strong mm. and and solid. But how did the emotional roller coaster of having these children? How did you learn from each other? What did you learn in that process, or how has it helped strengthen you as a couple? I don't know to answer this question. <laughs> Me neither. Um, I. Uh, all the stressful things that ha we've dealt with as a couple have brought us closer. I think we're lucky in that regard. We, um, we've we been through some really scary, really stressful things that have torn a lot of other couples apart. Mm -hmm. And it's done the opposite for us. It's brought us closer together. And I think because we're friends and and we're, we're close, so I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a friendship because we, we, have, we, we talk about it right away. Which there's something that is, uh, you know, we need to we need to discuss. It's not yeah. that we wait a, a day, two, a week, or a month. We just talk right away. It's just like talking normally, yeah. normal mm -hmm. talk. Nothing to to be upset or something to make any drama. Just talk about it and then see what we can do. What you think? Okay, this is the decision, and we move on. Yeah. It's, yeah. Try to be adult, I guess, right? Yes. Yeah. There's no going to bed. Communication, <laughs> yes. making sure we're on the same page and we're going to tackle this together. No right. going to bed angry. Yeah. Yeah. Especially go to bed angry. What's the point? I mean, just, you know, trying to talk and, and talk it can, out. And, and he's go. one of those people that can tell if there's any little thing bothering me and he will, he will pry it out of me. It takes a, <laughs> it takes a, little bit of prying sometimes because I just don't want to get in. Sometimes you're just like, just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But he will, he'll prod until I'll talk it out and then it's fine. Um, and I think I'm the same way with you. If Yeah, we know each other. We know when is, when is the right time to talk. So when, you know, I know when something's bothered her, so I'll let her, you know, chill for a, for a little <laughs> bit. And then when Half I know, a second. Uh, when I know this is the right time, I go there and you know, try, to, try to talk it out. You know, it's, we kind of know each other very well, and it was the strange part. It was that we, we kind of knew that from the beginning. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but I don't Crazy. know what it was. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. that happened. I went from being married to a stranger to being married to my best friend, but I just met him. You know, it was one of those things that I don't I don't know how, oh. how, how it happened, but it did. Yeah. So so you've gone through you have gone through a lot in ten years you, you know oh, you, yeah and <laughs> so before before we actually started uh, recording the episode we had talked a little bit about you both have also gone through starting your own business together yeah yes. opening and closing a yeah. business yeah two business so what what ha, what has this added to your relationship what? well 
that I don't want to do it there again. <laughs> 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 Andrea isn't he's very creative he's a mechanical engineer so he's very he sees patterns and you know sees the mechanical side of things but he's also very creative he'll think of something and go wouldn't it be neat if this was he'll draw it up on I, on CAD and you know that's his mechanical brain but I'm more of a freehand creative she's creative a, an, I'll call her extreme entrepreneur extreme entrepreneur and I'm nice. the one that goes, there's, wouldn't it be great if we had blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm just the kind that thinks about stuff like that. The risk tolerance factor um, is a, there's a big spread between mine and his. And when we, when we owned a business, that was the blaring difference between us because he, Andre, literally lost sleep. In fact, we spent many a night in the emergency room making sure that his panic attacks weren't heart attacks. Really? I mean, it, was yeah, it was that stressful. Oh, no. It was really stressful for me. It yeah. Stressful. He didn't sleep. He was working two jobs. I was trying to run an agency and have this this shop. And it was emotionally, physically, financially, in every way, one of the most stressful things I've ever encountered. And I I would do it again. Not the same way. <laughs> He's like, really? And Andrea <laughs> would never do that again. Uh, and to be honest with you, it did bring us closer. But I know our relationship, and I know Andrea, I wouldn't want to do that to him again. So if I ever did this again, and I will, I'll do, not the same way, but I will own a business again. I'll create something and, bi and build a business again. It will be either with a partner or by myself, with employees, I, I don't think that I would ever torture him like that again, <laughs> poor guy. He made the mistake of saying we need, there's no gelato in Chicago, in, the, in you know, there's no really good gelato, blah, blah, blah. And that's all I needed. Yeah. Just, <laughs> the next day she come home, you know, there's a... Uh, School could, in there's, uh, that, Bologna. Uh, no, there is that uh, shop, there's the oh, office that we can space. change. And, uh, <laughs> she already found the space. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Does this sound familiar, boyfriend? Bit, yes. <laughs> uh, We're like, hmm, there are so many things in common here. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I think it's the same as the foster deal that we went through. We clung to each other. Um, there were there were a lot of things that, because of of his freaking out all the time about finances, that was kind of annoying. But I also felt like this is. Uh, one of my best friends in life, and I don't like to see him like this. And that was one of the main factors of us going, is it worth it? We're working 16, 18-hour days um, trying to make this thing take off, and nobody wants frozen dessert and 70 below zero. You know, we were we had lines, <laughs> lines out the door in the summer and it cr crickets in the winter. It was just stressful, so stressful. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know what part of that brought us closer together. I don't know how that worked, but it that's how it worked. Well, that's and, a testament to your relationship yeah. because I've seen other couples go through stressful times like that. And instead of clinging to each other and moving forward like you guys have done, yeah. they'd fight amongst each other. It splits them up and it's over. Yeah. So that is that is – um, that is amazing that you've developed that friendship and you have that relationship where you do yeah. rely on each other and grow together to make whatever venture you're in yeah. positive. I think it's the blaming issue. Basically, when you are upset and something goes wrong, you want to blame somebody. Yeah, human and, nature. Right. Mm -hmm. And Neither one of us are like that. We never blame each other for anything. We just uh, Even at work, I don't think either one of us are like that. We're like, okay, who cares whose fault it is? Just right. fix it. Fix it and move on. And that's yeah. both and of that's our way, yeah. mindsets. Yeah. In anything. I never blame anybody for anything. I, if I'm on my job, I, people are reporting to me, but I'm never blaming anybody for something goes wrong. It just went wrong. Mm -hmm. We okay. learn something. Learn from it on. and move on. Exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the tact that I took with my first marriage. Okay. This sucks. And having <laughs> to go through the process sucked. But what what was my responsibility in the whole thing? And what can I do to never do that again? Are there lessons in it that I can take away from this? And what do I need to do to move on? And that's what happened. I moved on immediately. 
and found some the 180 of what I had the first time. Yeah. Now, do you think that if you guys had met before you had your previous relationships and that. marriages, she, she wouldn't have a date me. When I, I was wouldn't younger. have dated him. Really. <laughs> long, long hair. I don't. You can't see him on the po- on the other end of this podcast, but he doesn't have hair now. He had long hair, like shoulder length hair, split down the middle. He was a DJ. He's everything. He it was com- the complete opposite of what he is now. I wouldn't have dated him. We met at the right time. <laughs> so it's almost you have those relationships to thank for getting you here to this place. Yeah, I guess you you know you grow in a in a person. I think what I learned what I, what I learned looking back is that you becoming really you becoming who, who you really are late in your late in age. What you are you know in your twenties or in your thirties is not really defined yet. You're not yeah. really the person that you're gonna be, and then you 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 figure it out later. That's what sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I always says I would like to know when I was 20 what I know now. <laughs> right. Yeah. That would be good. It would be great. Wouldn't it? Doesn't it? work like that. No, but we we all grow, and we and and if you're smart about your own growth, you make note of it and you learn from it and you right. and you make Move better on. decisions as you go forward. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Li- that's what life is, though, yeah. right? A series yeah. of decisions and learning from mistakes and yep. it's a lesson yeah. yeah if you're aware enough i think to notice it and learn from it and that's the big thing you have to be aware enough and you have to yeah. be willing to learn from it right agreed yeah. so now knowing that you've gone through so much before you met each other so much together <laughs> when when you look back at all of this what what is the the number one thing about this particular relationship that you think really makes it strong? I think it's the friendship. It's this a strong friendship that we have. I mean, it, we will, I would never do something without her, her be aware of it or agreeing for what, we, what I'm doing because we, I have so huge respect of her opinion. Aww. And I think she does. She is the same. Yeah, yeah I'm more of the... Um, you know, decide on the fly and do something. So for me, I think it's more of a stretch to to stop and go, hey, hang on. Yeah, but you call There's me. some, I do. Yeah. And she <laughs> called me at work. Oh, I got this. Uh, she want me to decide right away. I'm, I'm, I'm at work. Can, I... you, can you wait when I came home? No, no, I cannot wait. Yeah. <laughs> and the boyfriend is like, I completely understand what you're going through, Andrea. I don't know if it's a girl thing or if it's growing up. I, I mean, my first job was trading stock. Um, so I had to make, that's how my brain works now. I had to make on the fly decisions for a living. So now I can look at something and weigh out really fast, which is the better decision and just decide and move on. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't, but I have to make a conscious decision to stop. There's another person in the equation now and include him in that decision making. Right. Yeah. So what is it about him, the number one thing? I, I would agree with what he said. Yeah. We're we are very close. We're we're similar in a lot of ways, um, but we communicate really well and we we get along really well. So I think a lot of that comes from being in the, of the same culture. Um, we did not have similar upbringing at all, but but we come from a similar culture and we have very similar expectations of each other, um, and we communicate really well. Nice. Hmm. I can see, I don't know, just watching them during this, you can see how Yeah, there's, there's un, the, the unspoken spoken communication. Word, the body the way, language. Yeah, you guys are really good friends, and you know each yeah. other really well. And yeah. that's, again, from we talked to a lot of divorced people. We talked to a lot of people in breakup relationships. This is a happy one. I'm, I'm yeah, excited yeah. to see oh, what yeah. you guys have learned in your past and how that's led you to this current relationship and how happy you both are. Where? Even going through everything that you've discussed, I'm uh, sure there's more insane. that we haven't even oh. um, got into. Those are the big ones. Big those ones. Yeah. <laughs> we've done some wonderful things together, too. We've traveled the world. We got married in Italy and went to a, our honeymoon was in the, on a small island in Greece. We've been... On lots of week vacation, and a lot of people take pity on us because of the whole foster um, thing and not being able to have kids, the infertility thing, and yeah, that that's sad and everything. But I'm I'm grateful now that I didn't have kids with someone else because I would have been 
anchored to that person, um, and I'm not. So I'm able to devote my life with, you know, in partnership with this person. So we're able to do, we vacation a lot, we travel a ton, we both love doing that stuff. So there are good things happening too, not just <laughs> bad things. <laughs> no, we do a lot of things together, especially. And what I, what I really like about the, our relationship is that we know when it's time to give some space to each other. When you know when it's time to, I need my own time, a little bit of time by myself. I know when she needs her time, so I leave her alone. And that's great, you know, when you have you want to do something by yourself. If I want to go somewhere and want to do it by myself, I don't want to have somebody. She knows. She doesn't care. And I don't care if she wants to do something. It's just, you know. Yeah. Be- it's a balance. Safe yeah. communication and a yeah. good balance, and yeah. that makes a good relationship. Right. He's a very intuitive guy. He's... He, you, you wouldn't, you see, you wouldn't be able to see that just talking to him, but he's a very intuitive and and um, can feel. What did you say the other day? I was on the phone with with um, Spectrum and I was losing my mind. Oh yeah, losing <laughs> my <laughs> mind. There you go. <laughs> and I. I've learned now in my old age that I need to, you know, f- finish whatever needs to be finished, walk away, hit the gym, play tennis, do something. And when after all that was done, he came to the gym with me. We played tennis together, and I felt just fine after that. But he turned to me and he said, you don't have to say anything. The energy that comes out of you when you're angry is palpable. It's like, yeah, it's like you can feel the frustration <laughs> coming off of you in waves. Not everyone, you know, yeah, I can tell that you're frustrated, whatever. And not everyone would would perceive it that way and do exactly what needs to be done for me. And that is so lucky for me. I'm so grateful for that. Otherwise, look out. I have yeah. a really heavy te- it doesn't i have a pretty long fuse but the the te- the bomb at the end of that fuse can get a little heavy yeah <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't know it, i wouldn't know anything about that yeah. would I? <laughs> I know no, but exactly. he handles it just yeah. well he has a really nice combination of spine and um an, enough enough to know that i need to be left alone but he pushes back when i'm when i get testy I think we do that to each other. Like, why are you yeah. talking to me like that? Right. You know, and that's all it really takes for someone yeah. to go, oh, sorry, I didn't realize. Yeah. Amazing. I'll have to use that one. Yeah. <laughs> why, why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, no, I'm going to have to prepare myself for that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Usually that question, though, pulls him out of whatever funk is happening, yeah. and he that's all he needs. I don't need a lot of coaxing to get him to to step out of it and look at. I just had a bad day and I need a minute. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's nice when you can have somebody that that you can communicate that with, and they yeah. they know you well they enough get it. and how to yeah. how to do it without poking you. Uh, yeah, or po- getting annoyed. And pushing you. Yeah. yeah, or pushing you further into whatever funk you're in. Yeah, yeah. it does it make very a nice. difference. But it is something because just you know since since I first met you outside and we brought you in and everything, just watching how you guys communicate and pay attention. And it's really a cool dynamic that you guys have. And like, like the boyfriend says, <laughs> like the boyfriend says, uh, you know, that we talked to so many people who've gone through, uh, who are going through a divorce and those kind of things. So, and you're the first couple we've had on here to actually talk about a relationship now and what it's done for you in the future. So it's really, I think, optimistic for our listeners to hear that it just gets better. Like yeah. the hard parts, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're going through the hard part to get to the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's almost kind of a necessary evil in order to, to come from a place of such gratitude. Yeah. I know a lot of women who have who are either going through a divorce or who have gone through a divorce and feel like a weight has been left off of them. And and that's exactly how I felt because I knew right away that I had made a mistake when I married my first husband. So I think wallowing in why you're going through this or um, what someone has done to you or, you know, all of the thought processes that you go through when you're going through a divorce 
if there's a way for you to step outside of that and take it as a new beginning of a way to meet someone who's right for you now, as opposed to someone who you've just left, who's wrong for, who was totally wrong for you. If there's a way for you to remind yourself every time that you find yourself wallowing in why me, why me, woe is me, all of those things that you go through when you're going through a divorce, it really did help me get jump right back onto my feet and hit the ground running when it came to starting over and being with someone that was really right for me really right for me yeah. because the first per- person that I was with was so wrong for me. <laughs> it was so, <laughs> such a huge mistake and, and so apparent. It was so like blaring when I married this person. It was like, oh no, what did I do? And I remember asking myself that all the time, laying a- awake at night, like, huh, what did I just do? So when it did finally end, it felt like the right thing. Even though I made a promise and vows and all of the above, it felt right to to let that go and and decide to move on. Yeah. Good good words, good words of advice too it's for people. Ha- it's because such it a is hard. hard. It's heavy, yeah. especially if you've got kids and you've been with this person for a long time. It's been a part of your life for a long time, and you are really looking at starting over. But a lot of people look at starting over as a bad thing when it doesn't have to be. Um, and what I learned in that process was to step out of it, look at my responsibility in how I got there. And and I just kept telling myself, learn from that mistake. What can you do differently next time? And I literally landed on my feet. That's all it took for me to go, okay, I got married to be married, and I married the first sucker who <laughs> asked me. <laughs> and I lived that that choice, that that consequence for five long years. And I learned from that mistake right away. And then I met someone wonderful right after that. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you guys coming in and Thank talking you for to having us. us. Thank you very yeah. much. Our pleasure. Yeah. And sharing your, your story with everybody. And what we'll do is, um, well, maybe we'll have you back sometime and, you know, on an anniversary sure. and see how things are going. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we More have our 10th wisdom. next year. Yeah. Our 10th wedding anniversary in... June. Do you know that we have never celebrated our actual anniversary? Uh, both of us, at like a week after our anniversary, always go, Ooh, by the way. <laughs> the anniversary. You have two of them, though. You miss both of them? <laughs> Actually, yeah. we got married on St. Patty's Day in the U.S. and like June, mid-June in Italy, and and we miss them both. And so they're holidays. Them. Like, do you just skip the? Ho- do you celebrate the holiday, St. Patrick's Day? No, no, no. it's not really a holiday. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. it's a Chicago. Yeah. It's a whole, it's whole other thing. life. Yeah. There. Chicago, New York. <laughs> yeah. It's a parade. Green rivers yeah. and yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So. Well, this has been great, seriously. So thank you so much for for coming in. My pleasure. You're welcome. Our pleasure.